Guten Tag, ladies and gentlemen, it is me, Mr. Spinosaurus, coming at you with a another video. Now, this video is going to be very, very different from my usual content. And that is because this video is somewhat religion-based. Now, I would, before we get into this, I would like to say that this is a disclaimer. If you are not a part of my religion, I am not trying to force my religion up. On you you can you are free to believe in whatever you wish but for me this is what I see and this is what I think you don't have to agree with me you don't have to say that you do agree with me and I'm not trying to make you agree with me I'm just throwing out a theory uh, if these things that happened in the world are true so, without, with the disclaimer out of the way, let's begin. So, for all of you that know, uh, or do not know, I am uh, of Christian religion. I believe in uh, God. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Noah's Ark. And that is what we're going to be talking about mainly today, and Noah's Ark. But first, I would like to say that dinosaurs for me, has changed. Now, a lot of you are probably asking, well, Mr. Spinosaurus, what do you mean by that? And how did dinosaurs change in your eyes? Well, it's all thanks to something my parents took me to that on our vacation that I was not aware of, and that is the Ark Encounter. Um, this has opened up my eyes to the possibilities uh, into what I now see as fact uh, about dinosaurs. Because when we went to the Ark Encounter, I thought, okay, well, there's going to be a lot of animals on there. There's going to be like these little figurines or these big uh, statues of these animals like bears, lions, and tigers. No. Uh, th those were there, yes, but... There was something more there. There were dinosaurs there. And when I walked in and I saw a pterodactyl statue in a cage, I thought, what the heck? Why is there a dinosaur on Noah's Ark? Because back, uh, until I went to the Ark Encounter, I thought I continued to think that dinosaurs were in the three separate stages of time. You know, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. And I thought, this was way before humans showed up. Uh, this was way before the, uh, the, Adam, or the Adam and Eve story, the Garden of Eden. But no, I was wrong. Uh, at least in my religion's eyes. So, we continued to walk through the exhibit and I continued to see more and more dinosaurs even dinosaurs that were not in the same categor categorization of times. You know, I would see T-Rex next to Baryonyx, and I, I was flabbergasted. I did not know what to say. It, it, it was amazing to me, because everything that we know and everything that I know or choose to believe about dinosaurs has changed in a matter of seconds. And... I came out in a matter of hours with a whole entire new outlook on dinosaurs. And I thought that was really, really kind of amazing for me. Because it gave me a chance to, you know, search up more things and look into it more. But, anyway, as, as you all are probably asking, or wondering, you, I'm sure you all have a lot of questions some that I'm afraid I can't answer because I, uh, I forgot the main points of the exhibit to where it said this is why the dinosaur layers are the way they are. This is why uh, scientists believed that dinosaurs lived in different time periods. I didn't memorize all that. Sadly, I wish I did, but I don't. If you want to check it out, I'm sure there's some place on the internet where you can find it. Or you can go to the Ark Encounter yourself. Let me... Let me tell you, it is amazing. Even if you are not religious, even if you are, you do not believe in Noah's Ark, it is 
fun to see. But anyways, um, so many of you are probably asking, and this is the one question that I can't answer, well, how could Noah fit a Tyrannosaurus Rex, a Brachiosaurus, and all those other big dinosaurs into a boat? Even if the boat was humongous, it wouldn't have been able to support those big dinosaurs, food-wise and space-wise. And to that I answer, well, what makes you think that he brought adult dinosaurs onto the boat? He only had to save two species. They didn't have to be adults, but they had to be two species of the same sex. Or not of the same sex, of different sex. A male and a female, so they could reproduce after the flood. So, during this Ark encounter, I saw... Uh, statues of these baby dinosaurs and I thought oh that's how he did it and when you say every species what what they really mean is every genus not every species like for example um, Baryonyx, Suchomimus, and Spinosaurus he didn't have to collect all of those he just had to collect two of the same species from the Spinosaurid genus. And that was considered uh, having two of every species. So you wouldn't... He could He didn't even have to bring Tyrannosaurus Rex. I think it would have been... I think he would have. But he could have brought Tarbosaurus, Tarvasaurus, Albertosaurus. They didn't have to be T-Rex. just had to be of the Tyrannosaurid genus. And later, I, con I continued walking down the exhibits, and then I realized, I realized something. The Adam of... I, I keep on calling it the Adam of Eden. The Garden of Eden didn't look like how most storybooks uh, make it look out like. It actually looked something like this. And I thought that was very interesting. Now, I know another question you guys may be saying, well... What about the meat-eating dinosaurs? Uh, you're not supposed to eat meat until after the flood. Well, that's the thing. Uh, for some reason, what, again, I'm sure it had a poster on it or something that I was stupid enough not to read, but for some reason, uh, all the meat-eating creatures didn't have to eat plants anymore after the flood. They were allowed to eat other animals especially after they were done procreating and revitalizing the earth. So, every animal, bears, tigers, elephants, uh, meeting dinosaurs like T-Rex and Spinosaurus, they all ate plants before the flood. And after that, uh, this is where, you know, this is why I give a religion disclaimer. After that, God gives them permission to eat off each other and fight for survival. Because the only reason they started Flood was because of the humans. They were making false accusations to a false god. Uh, they were doing something that God did not want them to do. And that's when God said, okay, look, Noah, you take every single animal of every genus, put them onto a boat, and survive the Flood along with your family. And you, of course. I will wipe out humanity. You will pro recreate humanity under uh, my supervision and teach them my law. So, by a Christian standpoint, we are all brothers and sisters. We are all family. We are all related to Noah. I thought, I think that was pretty cool to see. Um... I think another thing that I saw that was very interesting were gladiators. And they were fighting dinosaurs. Kind of like how gladiators fought lions when replaced with dinosaurs. Which is obviously a bigger threat. Because, holy crap, why would you want to fight a dinosaur with nothing but a spear and a stick? Or something like that. It was, it was mind-boggling to me. So... 
there was a um, th there was a, a little diorama, right, of these gladiators fighting against a Carnotaurus, and I thought that was really kind of cool to see, and it proved a theory that I had had for a long time, and that theory was when we bring dinosaurs back to life, if we bring a dinosaur back to life, is able to survive in our world, even if the oxygen levels are different. Because humans and dinosaurs survived in the same oxygen level at that time. So if we can survive at this oxygen level, then dinosaurs must be able to survive at this oxygen level. I, I do think that that is amazing to realize and think, especially when you're a dinosaur lover and especially when you're a Christian. And you don't even have to be a Christian to uh, take this as a theory of the potential outcome of the dinosaurs. You just don't. And th this changed. Ev this would change everything if you do believe in this theory. This would change how the dinosaurs died out, because you know it's not a meteorite, and it's not a mass extinction. It is just evolution, because the world is constantly changing after the flood. You know, of course, you have the Ice Age afterwards, and the animals adapted to the Ice Age. Uh, therefore, the mammoth, the giant sloth, and uh, other, other things. Humans obviously had to adapt to the Ice Age, and then start spreading out all over the world. But I still think that it's amazing. I still think it's a little bit weird, <laughs> like really weird, to think about this, uh, to, to think about what I thought dinosaurs were and now to what I think dinosaurs are now. You know, once again, you have the old way versus my new way. And... Obviously, I, when I make videos, uh, they're not going to include this theory unless they're specific to this theory. Because I don't, basically, I don't want to piss a whole lot of people off. So, I won't do that, I promise. Um, I will refer to dinosaurs in the time zones that most uh, dinosaur people think is correct. You know, uh, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. So don't worry, this isn't going to change any of the content. This is just something that I thought I want to give to you guys to think about, uh, to theorize about, and to research upon. If you guys do, however, want to know what I'm talking about, go to the Ark Encounter. I believe it is in... Uh, either Kentucky or Ohio. I can't remember where, but it's pretty close to Cincinnati. Um, it really is a mind-boggling thing to think about. And it really is special, especially to me, because this is what I think dinosaurs are now. And it, if it ends up to be true, there are a lot of scientific scientific discoveries, a lot of breakthroughs that can come of this. Because who doesn't want to live in a world filled by dinosaurs to where we live side by side with no problems at all? That is the world that this theory could open up to. And I think that is the world, personally, I think this is the world that will become of humans. And I can only hope that I'm alive to watch that all unfold. I'm Mr. Spinosaurus, and I'll see you all next time. Auf Wiedersehen.